Most years, the inner solar system welcomes just a handful of comets like a quiet country lane seeing a few cars pass by. But in late 2025, something truly extraordinary is unfolding. It's as if that quiet lane is suddenly hosting an international Grand Prix with seven major comets all diving in at once. And one of them, the interstellar heavyweight 3i Atlas, is like a mystery contender from a foreign land, growing bigger and brighter by the day. This isn't just a busy period, it's an unprecedented swarm, a cosmic traffic jam that astronomers haven't seen since modern telescopes began plotting the heavens. They're like air traffic controllers for the solar system, mapping out every approach, every trajectory, as these icy visitors race past Earth and the Sun in a tight six-month window. Some are even predicting that all this sudden activity could subtly influence solar storms, like a fleet of tiny ships creating a wake that nudges a great ocean liner. And who knows, one of these celestial guests might just flare bright enough for us to see with our own eyes. Imagine seven colossal, dirty snowballs all screaming toward the sun at once. And one of them isn't even from around here, it's from an entirely different neighborhood of the galaxy. NASA's alert boards, usually blinking with routine updates, lit up like a Christmas tree in July when telescopes in Chile spotted Comet 3i Atlas, the third visitor ever confirmed to come from another star. As if that wasn't enough, now six more comets are rounding the final bend, all due to pass inside the orbit of Mars before Halloween. It's like seven marathon runners who started in different countries at different times, all converging on the same finish line at the same moment. No, this isn't a disaster movie, nobody's on a collision course, but it is shaping up to be the busiest month for comets in modern history, and scientists are practically giddy with excitement. Picture this, you're sipping coffee on a quiet morning, thinking about your day. Meanwhile, 180 miles away, a chunk of alien ice that formed before Earth even existed is vaporizing in our sunlight for the first time in billions of years. It's spitting a strange cocktail of carbon dioxide, nickel vapor, and cyanide into our most advanced telescopes. It's like a master chef tasting a dish from a completely unknown cuisine, trying to figure out the recipe. In just a matter of weeks, we're going to have seven of these icy headlights gracing our sky at the same time. What are the odds of such a convergence? What secrets can they teach us about the universe in our place in it? And why is the one from outside our solar system already acting like it's late for dinner, fizzing and popping with unexpected activity so far from the sun's dinner table? Comet clusters aren't entirely unheard of, Jupiter's immense gravity, for instance, can act like a cosmic sheepdog, herding fragments of a single broken comet into tight groups, much like we saw with the spectacular breakup of Shoemaker-Levy 9. But what makes this event so profoundly rare is that we're talking about seven completely unrelated comets. They don't know each other. They're from different parts of the solar system, on their own unique journeys, all arriving within a single month. This isn't a family reunion, it's a one in three decades statistical fluke. It's like walking into a tiny random coffee shop and finding seven strangers who all happen to share your exact birthday. It's a celestial lottery win for astronomers. The inner solar system is about to feel crowded in the best way possible. All seven will pass inside 1.5 astronomical units that's well within Mars' orbit between mid-September and the end of October. And to put any worries to rest, the closest any of them will come to Earth is a comfortable 270 million kilometers. So we're talking about gorgeous targets for binoculars and absolutely zero need for evacuation plans. This isn't a threat. It's a front-row seat to cosmic history unfolding. Of all these visitors, 3i Atlas absolutely wins the headline jackpot. That 3i label is a badge of honor. It means it's only the third object ever certified as truly interstellar, a traveler from beyond our sun's gravitational grasp. It's a message in a bottle thrown from an unknown shore billions of years ago. 
Experts think it was born between 3 and 11 billion years ago, coalescing around a distant star before some ancient gravitational tussle booted it into the cold, dark void of interstellar space like a cosmic pinball. When our telescopes picked it up on July 1st, it was already coughing carbon monoxide and dust, a clear sign of activity far earlier than expected. Spectra from the Gemini South Telescope has since shown levels of carbon dioxide five times higher than what we typically see in our own solar system comets, plus a distinct signature of nickel vapor. That unique chemical mix is telling astronomers that the chemistry around other stars isn't some exotic alien recipe, it's eerily familiar. It's like finding a distant cousin who cooks with the same basic ingredients you do, but they crank up the spice to a level you've never tasted before. Now, carbon dioxide is an incredibly volatile ice. Think of it like a chocolate bar that's so sensitive it melts just from the warmth of your hand, not even needing the heat from the sun. In the frigid depths of deep space, CO2 stays solidly frozen unless the sun gets really, really close. The fact that 3i Atlas is venting so much carbon dioxide while it's still so far out is like seeing a frozen dinner start to steam while it's still in the supermarket's freezer aisle. It implies some truly fascinating possibilities. Possibility 1. This comet has never been this warm since it was violently ejected from its home system billions of years ago, and we are witnessing its first ever thaw. Possibility 2. Its original star system was just fundamentally richer in carbon dioxide than our own. Both are huge ideas that could rewrite significant parts of our planet formation textbooks. The keen eyes of the James Webb Telescope even caught the faint gas jets back in August, confirming the comet's nucleus is under a kilometer wide. That's tiny for something carrying such immense galactic secrets, yet it's putting on a show that rivals objects many times its size, like a single firecracker making the boom of a cannon. While three Eye Ratless steals the show, its six companions are no less fascinating. These are our local guests, our homegrown comets, cataloged with names like C2015F2 and C2025G1. They range from faint 12-magnitude fuzzballs that require serious backyard telescopes to a predicted 7-magnitude showpiece. They give scientists a comparative bonanza. Think of it as a cosmic taste test or a galactic bake-off. You have one oven, our sun, and you're putting in seven different cakes at the same time to see how their unique recipes react to the same heat. For instance, Comet C2025R2, Swan, is racing to its closest point to the sun on September 12th and will sweep past Earth at a relatively close 0.25 AU on October 21st, making it a prime candidate for observation in the pre-dawn sky. Then there's 414P Stereo, which swings around the sun on September 27th, offering a unique chance for our solar-watching spacecraft to study it up close. None of these will quite rival the sheer brilliance of a hail bop, but together they offer an unparalleled opportunity to compare and contrast. NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office isn't losing sleep over these seven comets. They're not threats. Their job is to tirelessly catalog and track them, like cosmic librarians keeping tabs on every book in the library. But the heavy lifting here is pure science. The Atlas Survey, which found our interstellar visitor, acts like a relentless night watchman. It takes 15-second exposures that sweep the entire visible sky every two nights. If a fuzzy dot moves between frames, sophisticated software flags it within minutes, initiating a deeper dive. And it's not just Atlas. We have a whole team of cosmic detectives on the case. Tess, the planet hunter, was like the beat cop who found the first clue, providing early images that 3i Atlas was active. The Hubble Space Telescope acts as the forensics expert, measuring the nucleus to pin down its tiny size. And the James Webb Space Telescope is the master interrogator, analyzing the light to get a full chemical confession. Every photon is vital before this comet finally exits our neighborhood at a blistering 58 kilometers per second. That's so fast it could cross the United States from coast to coast in just over a minute, a truly astonishing velocity for a cosmic wanderer. 
Every single comet is a free sample of primordial material, a time capsule from the solar system's earliest days. By watching them, we're not just satisfying scientific curiosity, we're rehearsing for the day something bigger, something potentially dangerous heads our way. This seven-comet convergence is a live ammo fire drill for planetary defense. The algorithms that spot faint objects, the methods that identify their chemistry, the models that predict their behavior, all of these tools are being sharpened in real time. We're learning about things like tail disconnection events. Imagine a comet's tail like a long flag streaming behind a ship. As it sails through the solar wind, it can hit a sudden storm, a coronal mass ejection, where the magnetic field flips violently. This is like a hurricane-force gust ripping the flag right off its mast. The old tail is cut loose and drifts into space, while the new one begins to grow. Solar physicists are watching this swarm with a mix of anticipation and unease, because some research groups argue that a sudden spike in cometary plasma, especially from this many comets, could subtly nudge the sun toward more intense outbursts. It's like asking if a few small boats can create a ripple that affects a giant battleship. This seven-comet convergence is giving us invaluable data to refine the toolkit we'll need if an uninvited mountain ever comes knocking on our door. So, can you actually see them? For sky watchers, particularly south of the equator, you're getting the best seats in the house for the interstellar star, 3I Atlas. It glides through the constellations Sculptor and Cetus in October. Its brightness, or magnitude, will be around 9. In astronomy, magnitude is like a golf score. The lower the number, the better and brighter it is. At magnitude 9, you'll definitely need a 6-inch telescope and a dark sight away from city lights to truly appreciate its ghostly glow. The brightest of the local bunch, C2025H3, could reach magnitude 7 in late September. That's prime binocular territory under rural skies. And for those keen on catching C2025 A6 Lemon, its path keeps it visible in the evening sky after sunset in November, offering one of the most accessible observing windows. Don't worry about tracking them all yourself. Apps like Stellarium and Sky Safari and NASA's own What's Up videos post updated coordinates every week. A pro tip? Try to catch them in the early evening before the moon gets too bright in mid-October and washes out the fainter targets. If you want real-time charts to hunt down all seven of these comets, drop a comet map in the comments right now and I'll pin the link to the tracker I personally use. While you're down there, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss our live stream when 3i Atlas reaches its closest point to the sun on October 30th. Trust me, you won't want to miss seeing an interstellar visitor up close. Seven comets, one from another star, representing zero danger to us but holding an infinite wellspring of science. This month-long convergence is the universe's spectacular reminder that while Earth is a moving target and a very busy shooting gallery, we have never been better equipped to watch the show. It's a moment of profound luck and profound opportunity. So keep your optics ready, your eyes to the sky, and your curiosity set to high beam. The ancient ice is calling to us from across the stars, and for once, it's bringing answers, not extinction.